Hey guys, this is Scott with Grayson Hobby, and in this three-part video series, we're going to be building our wildly popular Grayson Hobby Sequoia. In the first two videos, we're going to be going over construction, and in the third video, we're going to tackle the electronics. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out all the pieces in our foam sheet, and we'll want to use a sharp hobby knife for that. All right, that completes that. All right, you'll want to save these remaining pieces uh, for repairs should you need them. All right, I'm going to show you one of the ways and probably the fastest way to install your carbon supports. What I have is an old uh, soldering iron and on the tip I have a wheel collar. And What I have is I have it set the depth or the thickness of the carbon rod plus the thickness of my straight edge. All right, I'm going to lay my carbon rod on there. I'm going to take my ink pen. I'm going to mark the ends. And since my straight edge is only 18 inches, I'm actually going to mark a couple of spots periodically through here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to lay this across, and I'm going to go ahead and draw a line through these marks here. And the reason I'm drawing the line and not going ahead and going straight in with the soldering iron is again, like I said, my straight edge is not long enough to go all the way across, so we'll have to move it, and this will help me align it here in just a second. And make sure you get this straight across. All right, and then what you're going to do is you again you're going to line up your straight edge on the line. Pressing straight down and then resting the wheel collar on your straight edge. You're just going to pull over the length of the carbon rod and it's going to cut a nice even channel right through the center for your carbon rod. If it rides up just a little bit, no worries. Hot glue is going to fill it. All right, and there we go. That gets the channel finished. All you need to do is take your carbon rod, run it down there, clear out any of these little burrs, give it a test fit. And it's ready to glue. All right, we're going to run a bead of hot glue right down that channel. And we're going to set our carbon rod in and press it firmly into that glue. You want to make sure you keep this as level as possible until the glue set. All right, for this next part, I cut a few of the squares of our scraps. And what we're going to do is I run a bead of hot glue right on top to fill in any of the voids. Then I take my scrap. And run it right down through there and smooth it out as level as possible. Alright, to cut these manually, you're going to want to lay your 080 rod down. I like to start this about an eighth inch or so from the leading edge of the inside cutout for the elevator. You just want to put your witness marks at the end here. Keep this, if you'll notice, this has a lot of movement right there in the center of that. So you want to keep this as straight as you can and parallel to the uh, to your straight edge. And then just draw your line. And I draw the line uh, just in case I have a little slip up or if this gets off just a little bit, I'll be able to align my straight edge back perfectly uh, parallel with this line here. 
All right, now the 080 is a very small rod, so you don't want to cut very deep, just the tip. And you'll want to run that the length of your mark. A couple passes should be fine. And then what you want to do is you want to back that up just the width of the 080 rod. And then run another pass. Again, don't go too deep. This is not very, not very thick rod. Alright, now we can either take the tip of the hobby knife or a small flat blade screwdriver and just dig that cut out. Alright, that's just enough for the 080. Let's give it a test fit. And we are ready for some glue. And just like on the ailerons, we're going to run a bead of glue right down the center. down in there. I don't know if I mentioned this before but I use a low temp hot glue and that's the reason why I'm able to touch this right after. Um, the adhesion is not a problem uh, and it's it's a very easy to work with. You don't don't leave with uh, burnt fingertips. All right, we're gonna fill the crack And then using a scrap of foam, I like to level that out. Get nice and smooth across through there. And then we'll let that dry. It's actually an extra little tip that I like to use. You guys can find the compressed air if you turn it upside down. You can use the refrigerant on the inside to uh, set that faster. All right, we're going to go ahead and temporarily cut in our hinges uh, for the rudder and the elevator. It's going to be a lot easier this way uh, versus when once we get the profile put together. Uh, it's almost going to be impossible to bevel the edges and to get your slots in there. Um, I'm going to be using a Dubro uh, hinge slaughter, uh, but I'm not going to be using uh, the tool that comes with it uh, that you actually push in uh, to create the slots. These are great for balsa, and they're also great for our Depron. Uh, but they don't work too well with this as uh, the EPP has too much sponginess uh, and it kicks it back. So instead, we're going to be using a hobby knife. So we're going to line up the rudder with the fuselage. And about a half inch, three quarters of an inch down from the top, three quarter inches up from the bottom. And then right in the middle, I'm going to put three marks, three little witness marks on either side. Uh, and that's where my three hinges are going to go. Marks over to the end here. And I'm going to be using the 20 millimeter or 3 quarter inch slot. And the way that works is you'll open it up, put it on your surface, and then just close it down. And that'll get you dead center of your surface this way. And all you have to do is look through the crack and line up right in the center. Then all you need to do is take your hobby knife. And go straight in and cut the length. And so that you get a square cut, you'll need to turn it over and cut the back side until you meet the other one. Then just simply slide your hinge slaughter down and repeat the process for all three hinges. All right, we're going to repeat the process on the rudder itself. All right, now that we have this cut, we're going to give it a test fit. Slide in a hinge, each of our slots here. And one of the ways to keep your hinges from being pushed in is if you'll just apply a little pressure on the one side where you're pushing to, and that'll keep your hinges from wanting to push in every time. There we go. Got a good fit. Now don't glue these now. We're going to go ahead and assemble the profile and then we'll attach.